Too Dope, and we are back at RadioOnFire.com, your new sports and entertainment source. In today's show, we are focusing on community issues. We have our little special guest in the building. Say hi, everybody. Say hi. <laughs> She's co-hosting with me today, and we have Mr. Robert Cook in the building. How y'all doing? And we have Miss Angie Smith. Hello. And Mr. <laughs> Billy Rucker. And we are basically just talking about some of the issues going on in Baltimore City. We spoke about the homicide rate, and we started talking a little bit about the drug epidemic that is going on in Baltimore. Baltimore is uh, rated number one in the country, pretty much, of the per capita of people that are using heroin. And 60,000 Baltimore City residents alone are addicted to drugs and out of those 60,000 48,000 are heroin addicts so it's definitely a drug epidemic going on in Baltimore City um I every time I say the number I can't get over 60,000 people like it's such a huge number and it's not it's it's kids it's teenagers it's adults and Angie was making some very good points that a lot of people are turning to drugs because they are numbing themselves to the issues that are going on. Um, a lot of people also face mental health issues that, you know, are, goes hugely undressed in the African-American community. A lot of people are um, not even clinically diagnosed. Those that are diagnosed don't get the help that they need or take the medicine that they need. So it's a lot of issues that we have to look at when we start talking about the reasons of why the murder rate is so high and why a lot of the things in the city are going the way that they're going. And, you know, we're not going to figure it out in this one-hour show. And for the month, you have something to say? You got you to gotta tell the people something? <laughs> so um, we're going to do this for the month of June. I'm definitely going to continue to bring um, community leaders on so we can start talking about these issues. And moving past talking about the issues, we want to start – coming together and figuring out some of the solutions to some of these problems. So um, May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and I know that a lot of times we shy away from that issue. It's like the elephant in the room. Nobody wants to talk about mental health, but there are so many people dealing with mental health issues, depression, anxiety, bipolar disease. Um, and what are your thoughts on that? What is, why, why do you guys think that, especially in a black community, that so many people are afraid to say that I have this issue or I'm dealing with this and I need help. What are you, some of your thoughts on that? Truth is, how you expect for somebody to really talk about a drug problem if they can't really talk about their emotions, period. Um, so the, the truth is we've really got to start getting our youth or not even just our youth, us, involved or involved with our youth talking about these real deep conversations such as just uh even sex or just friendships or even how what is value, what is a friendship like really what is the real what is the real meaning of a friendship or even what is something even explain it to our youth that it's really nothing to ever really fight about that you could talk through or mediate through anything and that even just communicating to other people what you're going through is something that everyone you're not the only one going through it so once we start to express to our youth that they're not the only one going through whatever they're going through we're going we should stop saying that problem is a a lack of self of i would have this self-expression that we would we hopefully would stop saying that problem once we get our youth more into talking about their problems and actually what is happening in their daily life and actually trying to understand and break it down for them. And I think that was a great point again, Rob, and I think that the adults, we have to start looking at ways to um, bridge the gap with the kids because there's definitely some type of disconnection between the generations. And, you know, uh, I, I know, like I said, when I was growing up, my parents, you did what you were told. You didn't really have that platform to say, you know, uh, how you were feeling, and then also in the black community, you know, we're, 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 we tend to be more spiritual, and you know, sometimes a lot of the Christian people and those religious people kind of brush it under the rug and say, just pray about it, and things like that, but uh, 
Yeah, prayer is good and prayer works, but these are clinical issues that people need to see. People with license and social workers and psychologists to help with these issues. It's not something that you're going to pray about and you're going to wake up tomorrow and all of a sudden you don't have bipolar disorder or you you know kids sitting in school with ADD and ADHD and the kid parents ready to knock them upside the head because they think they just being bad in school. So um, we definitely have to start working on ways to bridge the gap to address those issues. I know with myself, um, I was clinically diagnosed with anxiety in 2013, and you know sometimes we just we're, we're afraid to tell people like I need help or I'm having this thought or having someone that you can speak to about the issue. So. Um, mental health is definitely another one of those issues that tie into some of the things that we see going on in the community. And I urge people that if you are dealing with some type of mental health issue, please get help. There are uh, places and programs out here for you. Before we end the show, I'm going to leave you guys with some numbers and some websites where you can call in and get some help um, with some of those things. So. Um, what, what are you feeling about the mental health issues going on in the city? I mean, the mental health issues, like, like you said, there's a lot of disconnect um, with parents and children. One, I mean, I see a big disconnect because of, like, the parents scared of their kids. So, it's like, you got to... And then it's, I mean, it's, it's, that's where the really big disconnect is. I mean, I see, you know, like, even in my own family. You got me. Like the kids don't respect the them, so you left the kids around right yourself, and then it just, you know. So, um, I don't I mean, it's, it's a tough thing. <laughs> it's something tough to do. I mean, it's really like, you see, I can't really like pinpoint a solution to it because it's like, I mean, I still have issues on my own. Like, you know, I got anxiety or <laughs> anger management problems sometimes that I got to deal with, but um, I don't know. <laughs> It's a tough issue because it's so widespread, though. And Kareem Goldman on Angie's live feed made a good comment. He said they haven't been taught how to love or how to deal with issues because of their parents, because their parents don't know themselves. So we have uh, parents raising kids, and the parents haven't figured out how to love. And another issue is we have babies out here raising babies, 14-year-old um, parents out here. How, at 14 years old, are you... How how can you parent correctly at fourteen years old? Your mind isn't isn't even developed to be a parent and to teach your kid things or how to even deal with that. So that's another issue. We have babies raising babies. We definitely have kids raising themselves. We have older siblings raising the younger siblings. So again, we lost that sense of community. I know we never went to daycare when we was growing up. We went to grandma's house. We was at nana's house. Somebody in the family watches. We didn't have to go to daycare. We didn't. What you got to say? She says she's not going to daycare either. You're not going to daycare? No, you don't want to go to daycare? Okay. So we have a little talk show host here. So, um, yeah, like the kids didn't, um, like we didn't go to daycare and like I said, everybody was responsible for everyone's kids, and we were, we were able to be kids, and I think a lot of youth are being robbed of their childhood, and they're being forced to grow up way before their time, and they can't handle it. We as adults can barely handle it, so imagine putting all that pressure on a child. So it's so many things that we can talk about, and um, as we begin to wrap up, I think the main thing here is we all know that all of these issues are on the table. We have to figure out how to come together collectively and how to start finding solutions to these problems because we can sit on here every day, week after week after week, talking about all the problems going on in Baltimore City, talking about what's going on with the kids, what's going on with the parents. But if we're not getting to the solutions to move forward, then we're at a standstill. And Angie, I want you to um, talk about Restoring a Village, what it's about, how people can connect with you, how they can get involved. Angie knows everybody that's doing something in the community, so you have no excuse not to connect with her and figure out a way to get involved. So go ahead and give us a little bit about Restoring a Village. A little bit about a big project. <laughs> um, so basically, um, Restoring a Village project, again, is a collective um, effort, and it takes everyone. What we're doing is the networking. We're working together. We're, br we're bridging that gap. We're bringing people together. We're building partnerships, relationships. Um, a lot of times I, um, I've had some people that kind of was hesitant at first, 
Um, just because, like you said, there's so many. There's like 50 million uh, nonprofit mm-hmm. organizations, and it's just like, what's different about you? Mm-hmm. The difference is you have to be consistent, and you have to have a heart for it. Um, that's just like a teacher. If you don't have a heart to teach, the, you're going to go in there only for a check. So if you're going in there to, with the understanding and, and the, to make a difference, then you're going to make some changes. Um, all I talk about, I don't do a lot of talking. All I do is come up with solutions or I meet with people to, to bridge that, to make a connection. Um, just the other day, we were talking, to, um, I was talking to uh, Catherine's family, I'm sorry, I can't get it out, family and services, but they have an organization in Park Heights. Um, basically, they're looking for, they have plenty of books that's in this church and they're trying to have someone that can build book banks. I mean, it's just the simplest things. Whatever your gift is, their gift is to put a library in the Park Heights area because they lost the library. So they don't have any libraries in the, in the um, community. My, my uh, goal is not to say Angie or Restoring the Village can always come up with a solution, but the connection. I was able to make a call and that person is now working with someone that's going to build them some book banks. Wow. They, awesome. they, playgrounds, anything, whatever that's needed in a community. So we're trying to find people in different districts in the um, community. But again, it's just about be- being at that village that help. So one of the, one of the other things is um, we're trying, and I have to put this out, sorry. I have to put this out because the day came in my mind and my heart. Um, I'm working with um, one of my brothers, Marvin. Um, he lost his nephew. I don't know if you all have seen it or heard, but uh, Rhonda Rose, she lost, she lost her son, um, Arkel Scott, and he's one of the one of five students that was lost this school year at Excel Academy. That's a lot to lose five friends just this school year alone. It's not even talking about in the past. So. You do have those that are want to be high. Some are afraid. Some are getting robbed. Some don't even know if they're going to make it back home. That's a lot for a youth. That's a lot for a young adult. And so this young man was trying to finish school, and he was getting ready to graduate. He's not going to graduate, you know. Wow. So what we don't, what we're, what they initiated was that they are going into their school system and they're going to be using um starting some type of uh career workshop for the students and just trying to just love on them show them love so what i did today was a call to action i said who can get connected to a school you can't tell me you don't have an hour of your time you can't i got a two-year-old and she's only here so i apologize she's only here because it was on the strength of today can you get here and that's what you have to do that sacrifice yes i can get here i got the baby but i'm gonna get there bring the baby so come on uh you can't give me no excuse i got one getting ready to go to college and one potty training no excuse we gotta stop the laziness stop the conf- stop you know making um you know just saying that you can't what you can't and cannot do find a school that was the call to action today, and someone picked it right up and said, I'm going to start a website. We're going to do a networking. It's all about the mouth. Speak. Don't think that you're not, you don't have a powerful voice because you do. You do have a powerful voice. It was a, a young student at Mervo who just who told me that they're trying to have some type of, um, nobody would listen to them. We gave them a platform, and they ran with it. Now they started their own business. Wow. They just wanted somebody that they can believe in them. They were the same way. Like, I'm taking care of my home. I can't get here. And they went and they came with attitude. But when I embrace them and say, what can we do to help you? Is, is it better to do a weekend? Is it better to do this hour? We got to meet people where they are. Yeah, and I think definitely we definitely need to start spreading some more love and loving on one another more. Um, so I want to leave you guys with these resources, these telephone numbers and websites. Um, so the first one is if you want to learn more information about how to stop drug overdoses, you can go to www.dontdie.org. Again, that's www.dontdie.org. Dot org and that is um, a website and they teach you all about drug overdoses how you can help someone if you see someone going through a drug um, overdose and all of those steps and um, I know suicide is running rampant worldwide worldwide so many people are turning to suicide um, we're seeing them on a Facebook live videos everywhere so um, I just want to give you guys the National Suicide Prevention Hotline 
number, and that number is 1-800-273-8255. Again, 1-800-273-8255 for the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. And all of these numbers are open 24 hours, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So there are people that are waiting, that are standing by, that are willing, trained, and well able to help you through these crises, interventions, and get you back on track. If you need someone to just listen, if you're confused, please call these numbers. The Maryland Suicide Prevention Hotline, and it's also the Youth Crisis Hotline, the number is 1-800-422-0009, 1-800-422-0009. And um, for more suicide information, you can definitely visit www.suicide.org. And I'm going to put all of, these, um, all of this information on my Facebook page in the comments so you can all share. I'll just make it one status. And if you need um, mental health help, or substance abuse help, there's also a hotline for that. And they do crisis intervention, substance use treatment, mental health treatment, and they also assist with overdoses. And the number to them is 410-433-5175. Again, that's 410-433-5175. And I want to, again, thank my guests for coming out today so very last minute, but I thought that this was a pressing issue and something that we definitely need to discuss. And it's very clear that we are dealing with some complicated, systematic social obstacles, um, political obstacles, economical obstacles, environmental obstacles. There are so many things that we have to overcome, but we have to start taking the steps towards that. We can't keep sitting around talking about what the problems are. We have to connect with one another and get connected to the solutions. So if everyone can just go around and give your social media plugs and tell the people how to connect with you on social media, so we can um, get some connections going and um, definitely stay connected with each other and definitely work on something for us to do together. So, um, Rob, you can go ahead with your social media and whatever information um, you want The to best share. way to get in contact with me would have to be uh, Facebook, and you can look me up at Robert Tranquilizer Cook. Um, I think that's the best way to get in contact with me. Okay. And Angie. <laughs> Um, the best way to reach me is Restoring the Village Project on Facebook. Um, we're also on Instagram as um, RTV Project One, um, as well as Twitter. And we have an email, RTV Project One at gmail.com. And Mr. Rucker. Uh, you can get in contact with me on Facebook at Billy Ibn Rucker. That's um, I B I N R U C K E R or. Facebook at Already Movement. That's your email. Oh, well, that's going to be um, on uh, Facebook. <laughs> I mean, this Facebook at Billy Ibn Rucker. <laughs> <laughs> I got a couple, but Facebook oh. is probably the main one, Billy Ibn Rucker. And y'all know how to connect with your girl Facebook, She's Dope LLC, Instagram, Queen underscore Dope 7, and on all other social media platforms, Twitter, Periscope. I'm on every single thing that's out there under She's Dope LLC. Thank you guys for tuning in with me for another week on the She's Dope Spotlight. Thank you again to my fabulous guests. Um, thank you um, to everyone who commented on Facebook Live. Thank you for your input, your opinion. And I will be back with you guys next Thursday right here at RadioOnFire.com, your new sports and entertainment source.